Well, as the weather team has been telling you here at Fox 17, today is the summer solstice. It certainly feels like it out there. If you haven't been outside, it's the official start of summer, and it is hot here in West Michigan. And those of us in the northern hemisphere, we're going to experience the longest day of the year today. Yeah, so we're here to talk about all interesting things happening for the sun this upcoming year. We've got NASA expert Margaret Peg Luce, uh, Luce rather, NASA Heliophysics Division Director. A lot going on here, and we're so excited to have you with us this morning. So first of all, today's summer solstice, of course, for folks at home maybe don't know what that means, can you uh, give us a quick definition? Sure. The, the Earth's uh, axis is on a tilt, and that's what gives us our seasons. And as the Earth uh, rotates around the, or revolves around the sun, it, uh, it reaches a point where this, the axis is, the North Pole is pointed in its maximum uh, uh, angle to the sun, and that gives us the longest day of the year. So that's what today is. Margaret, thank you. So NASA, you have some big plans coming up about how you'll celebrate the sun in the coming year. Certainly we celebrate it today on the longest day of the year, but tell us what, what's exciting for our sun right now? Well, the sun touches everything, and this is a really big year for the sun. Uh, in, in North America, we will be experiencing the rare opportunity to have two solar eclipses, an annular solar eclipse, which is when the moon partially covers the sun, and then a total solar eclipse where the rare opportunity that the moon will perfectly cover the sun and we'll be able to see the, the solar corona. Then toward the end of the year, Parker Solar Probe will reach its closest approach to the sun. This is our spacecraft that flies through the, the corona and is the first human-made object to ever fly so close to the, the surface of the sun. Wow. And then this is all happening at a time when the sun is reaching its maximum activity. Wow, a lot to, uh, so to see there. Yeah, we're excited about some of those events, so we'll have to mark our calendars for that. But you just mentioned kind of the sun being a little bit more active. How is that going to impact us here in Michigan? So the, um, the solar storms, um, solar flares, coronal mass ejections can send radiation our way that can impact our, uh, our communications, our GPS signals, our... Um, satellites on orbit and even astronauts in, in space, but it also will give us more opportunities to see the beautiful aurora. Wow, and I know we see the aurora here in Michigan. It's certainly not just about a suntan, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Margaret, I mean, I, I was interested in what you said about that mission heading very close to the yeah. sun. When is that happening? Do you know? So um, it is actually currently um, in, in a, an orbit that um, takes it close to the sun wow. every, a few times every year. Hmm. But in uh, December 24th of 2024, it will make its final maneuver to bring it to the closest approach. And then it will stay in that, in that uh, orbit and continue to sample the, the solar corona. Wow. So I'm sure we'll be learning a lot about the sun once it kind of gets to that point. We appreciate yeah. uh, all your interesting kind of facts, kind of something fun to bring to the dinner table today when we're yes. talking about the solar eclipse. But we appreciate, or summer solstice rather, uh, we appreciate your time and uh, we can't wait to hear more about some of those missions. Thanks, Margaret. Thank you. You weren't far off with that eclipse. <laughs> she mentioned there's going to be it's, an eclipse coming. It's one coming. of them, you know. Yeah. Is that it's one right there? Yeah, Do you are. remember the, one of the big eclipses? I was yeah. working in TV. We, in, we in wore the glasses. City. We wore we the glasses. And it was we, interesting. we had a cloudy day in Illinois when I, where I was. And yeah. we, we missed it. I we can hardly it. see it, too. We were supposed to be like the closest, one of the hot spots to see it. So. Mm -hmm. Anyways, all right. Well, as we go about our daily lives, it might be easy to forget uh, that our sun really has an impact within just uh, warming us up. And if you've ever wondered about the sun, and what it's sending our way, maybe to catch a sight of the northern lights. Margaret mentioned that as well. We might be able to do that a little bit easier with our active sun. You can check out a solar wind prediction model from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So the video, uh, the video prediction from June 16th to June 23rd shows the yellow dot is the sun. Looks really small on there. And Tiny. it spins and throws off waves of plasma or solar wind 
through the Earth, which is the green dot. Those large circles on top are a top-down perspective of our solar system. My goodness. You can see the solar wind's density on top. That lets us know just how strong that wind is. Okay, so again, look real close. The bottom circle is wind speed, so note that's measured in kilometers per second. So even on a slow day, those waves are heading towards us at about 450,000 miles an hour. Pretty windy out there, Tessa, mm -hmm. near the sun. So as that video plays, you can see those bands kind of moving away from the sun. Those middle wedges show a view of the solar wind heading towards us for a side pers perspective. So a lot of activity happening this week. So kind of a fun thing to see, but you do kind of have to look real close and kind of get to see everything. It's there. amazing. So much of this goes on and we look up and we just see a beautiful sunset. We or just a sunny see a, day. A, little, a little ball of fire right. out there. We so. don't know. All right, well, if we do get a strong solar storm that we were kind of talking about that can impact a variety of electronics, you just heard this, it can mm -hmm. kind of uh, inter uh, in interrupt rather our GPS satellites. Obviously, we use GPS to navigate a lot of things, but also construction, farming, the U.S. military relies on them too. In calm conditions, those satellites are accurate within a few feet, but during a solar storm like we were just talking about, that can really throw things off. A really bad solar storm could actually overwhelm our power grid in electronic devices, putting us in a dark spot for a prolonged period of time. So soak in the summer sun, of course, <laughs> as we're telling you. But remember, the sun is much more than a suntan. It has an enormous impact on our Earth. And hey, when we're talking about suntans, make sure you wear that sunscreen, too. Yeah, a little SPF out there. There's another solar storm, I think. <laughs> I'm, not the, I'm not the physics. Here. Me either. <laughs> NASA's not hiring us anytime <laughs> soon. All right. Anyways, uh, 829 right now is still ahead this morning. It is a great day.